معرفة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Now let us discuss about an Islamic forward effects. How do we structure an Islamic forward effects? So basically a forward effects involves exchange of currencies between two parties. So this is a corporate and this is a bank. Forward effects involves exchange of currencies between two parties with the promise or undertaking by one party to buy the required currency against the base currency on a specified future date at a promised exchange rate. Let us take this example. So there is a corporate which wishes to hedge its euro currency rate exposure against the dollars. It wants to hedge its euro currency rate exposure against dollars. So therefore it seeks a unilateral undertaking from an Islamic bank to sell the required amount of euro okay, on a specified future date for dollars at a promised exchange rate. Therefore, on the trade date, what happens is that the corporate exercises its right under the given undertaking and obligates the Islamic bank okay, to fulfill its promise. And what is the promise? To sell the euro for dollars. Therefore, both parties enter into an offer and acceptance to exchange both the dollar and the euro. And, which are and these currencies are delivered to both parties. So this is basically how an Islamic forward FX is structured. Now let us discuss about an Islamic spot FX. Basically, in an Islamic spot FX, two currencies are exchanged against each other. The basic rule of the Islamic spot FX is that that the transaction should be executed on the spot and both the currencies must be delivered to both the parties simultaneously. Any deferment of one or both the currencies will render the transaction non-Sharia compliant. Therefore, this is an important point that the exchange should happen on spot and the currencies should be delivered simultaneously. However, because of the uh, global nature of the transactions, and because of the different timings in the transaction, Sharia allows no longer three days okay, in the reconciliation of settlement of the currencies. And this delay should not be more than three days. And this delay is tolerated because in today's transaction, the transactions are happening globally and there are time differences between uh, different uh, geographies from which these transactions are happening. Therefore, a maximum of three day delay is tolerated in the settlement of the currencies. But the basic rule is that unless and until that purchase currency is credited to the account of a party, unless and until it receives, it cannot do any onward sale. Now in this example, let us discuss about currency swap. So let us take an example. So for example, if this is a Malaysian exporter and this is a Bahraini importer. So this exporter is exporting certain commodities from Malaysia to Bahrain. And this is the importer in Bahrain. For example, if the payment time is after three months and the payment would be done in Bahraini dinar. So in such a scenario, the Malaysian exporter would like to hedge its risk okay? because after three months, the exchange rate between the Malaysian ringgit and the Bahraini dinar could vary. So to hedge that risk in the currency rate, the Malaysian exporter approaches an Islamic bank and this Islamic bank provides a unilateral wad and undertaking and this undertaking would basically say that after three months the bank undertakes to sell Malaysian ringgit against Bahraini dinar at a promised exchange rate. So basically by getting this wad, a unilateral wad from an Islamic bank, the risk of change in currency rate of the exporter is mitigated. So what will happen in this is that for example Today, the Malaysian exporter has exported the goods and after three months, the Malaysian exporter is receiving the payment in Bahraini dinar 
from the Bahraini importer. And after three months when it receives the Bahraini dinar, the Malaysian exporter exchanges okay, that Bahraini dinar with the Islamic bank and receives the Malaysian ringgit. And this exchange rate has already been earlier okay, promised by the Islamic bank under the VAD. So this in a way gives comfort to the exporter because the exporter is hedging its currency rate risk. So this is basically how a VAT based currency swap works. So as we have discussed through an Urbun contract, the purchaser has the option to purchase uh, the commodities at a locked in price. For example, if the value of the commodities is $100. And the purchaser has entered into an Urbun contract with the seller. And these commodities are in the ownership and in the possession of the seller. The purchaser has paid $10 as an Urbun amount okay, under the Urbun contract. And according to the contract, the purchaser has a time limit of three days to make a decision. And after three days, if the purchaser has decided to purchase the asset then the purchaser pays the balance $90 and a proper sale and purchase agreement happens and then the assets are delivered to the purchaser by the seller. But in case if the purchaser has made a decision not to go ahead with the sale and purchase agreement then what will happen is that the seller will keep the $10 which were paid as an Urbun amount. So basically Urbun is an Islamic option.